This episode is brought to you by Rick's Eyewear. Eyewear that inspires confidence. If you would like to buy some premium eyewear, sunglasses, blue light frames, prescription, head online now, rickseyewear.com.au and check it out. Caps has been Australia's home of headwear since 2012. From snapback to fitted, curved peak to flat peak, our hats will fit anyone and everyone. Since then, we've grown and evolved into the leaders of US sports apparel in Australia. Head online at caps.com.au and check it out. Righto, let's get into the show. Righto, about time the big fellas arrived. Now, before we start, before I even introduce you, before I even introduce you, we've got a few people that I need to just wrap up here. Milwaukee Tools, nothing but heavy duty. Great to have them on board today. We've got Rick Sideway, we've got Caps, but it's all about Milwaukee. It's the first one with Milwaukee. They are just doing it all, Tub, and I can tell you what, I'm not the most handy bloke, but gee whiz, they're professional-grade equipment built for the trade professionals. They're reliable, durable, and they help you get the job done easier. I can't wait for today's podcast, mate. I haven't seen you in a while. Before we start, though, I need to crack something with you. Look at this. I've gone down to the shed, Marcus from yeah. Vodka Soda, and, and he's... He's a good man, Marcus. He's, he's a, a good product. He's uh, a good man. Toby Vodka Green, House. welcome to Tommy Talks, brother. Good to be here, mate. Thanks for having me. Cheers, mate. I've been waiting to crack on these. I'll put them on ice. Yeah, nice and cold, mate. Cheers, well mate. That's good. Vodka Soda, and I think this is brand new as well. This is the grape. Oh, that's the grape. That's beautiful. He does a good product, Cullet. Very smart, doesn't he? And, and he's a very smart operator, isn't he? <laughs> he's the um, he's the marketing man behind the brains. <laughs> and and while we're on Callet, the man behind the brand here, Vodka Soda, and look at the cool pack. So that's perfect. You can take that down to Bondi, put all the ice in, like I have here, set up for a podcast, whatever you're doing, and you're just ready to go. You just got back from Bali, mate. Callet was with you, wasn't he? Yeah, we had the villa in Changu. Yeah. It was um yeah good good time. Let's just go straight there. How was it? Who were you with? Yeah, so uh, a couple of good mates from Melbourne, Ben Pugh, Hamish uh, came across. Um, they were in for four days or so. Um, that was the weekend with them, so it was a bit of a you know a bit of a welcome party when when I arrived and four four days and then the next three or four days a bit more relaxed, a bit more surfing and enjoying Bali's uh, scenery and uh, culinary scene. It was uh, it was good fun, mate. That's great. Now we've got to talk about the guy that approached you at the airport. I've gone on your Instagram just to make sure that I don't, you know, fuck this one up, but it did say Toby Green, AFL bad boy. Did you remove it off Instagram, that photo? Did I? I don't know. I couldn't find it. I, George might have done that. Oh, um, there you go. I don't know. Um, talk us through that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Who's uh, dished you up? I think that was Pui. Um, <laughs> I got to the airport and there's about 500, you know, Balinese um, with signs and, you know, you're giving a good look at all of them because you want to get picked up. And I, I saw that one and had a good laugh. I went on a flight from Melbourne as well. So it would have it been a bit of a, um, yeah, it would have been a bit of a laugh for a few people walking past. That is big from Pui. That is, that is great. So what else in terms of this, uh, this year's off season? Is there any more travel involved? <laughs> We're going to get to travel later because you have the travel bug. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, going to Cairo in Egypt next week. Um, that's a bit of a different one, a bit of a late call. So a bit of a history lesson, I think, over there. Um, and then a few weddings, lots of weddings on this off-season. Then off to Fiji just for seven or so days, pretty relaxed, that one. Um, and then and then low-key after that, mate, get back to Sydney. And I've oh, got, I got to... Um, yeah, got to look after the dog, mate. He misses his dad. I've heard a lot about the dog. Talk, you're in. You, when we lived together, you you didn't really give a fuck about a dog. No, nah, I hated him. I hated him. You hated him. Yeah. Now you're in love. Oh, and then I said, "Why would you get a dog? They're fucking hopeless." But um, it's changed my life, mate. Changed my view on it. Um, what is it about yeah. having a dog? Is it, oh, he's just good to sleep with, mate. Just wake <laughs> up next to him and just cuddle him and Oreo oh, the Dalmatian. Yeah, yeah, he's that good. Just oh. Nothing bad about him, mate. Now, I got some mail on this, right? Yeah, and you can, you can confirm or deny you love him so much that you pick his earwax up and roll it up and just clean his ears with the fingers, not with the buds. Yeah, I don't have a problem with them, mate. I actually, oh. I actually quite like the smell of his ears. Um, so, no, that is true. Yeah, mate, just get the ear. You know, when we're sitting on the couch and he's got his head on my lap, mate, I'll just <laughs> whip, whip, whip it out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucked up. Imagine someone did that before you like dogs. I wouldn't have accepted what it. What would you no. say to him? We walked him out to my house, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Fucking hell. Let's uh let's let's talk about the year. We're gonna talk a bit of footy. Everyone loves the TFG. They love Toby. Um, haven't met a bloke that doesn't like you. That's met you. Uh, sum up this year for me. You've obviously missed the first few. When did you? What did you miss? Five or six? Yeah, first five. That hurts. Yeah, it was a good little stint on the sidelines, mate. But um, no, I knew what was coming, and obviously uh, had a bit of a fuck up in the finals last year. So. Um, just super disappointing, and then you know we were we were struggling as a team as well. So super frustrating, and then you know the year didn't get much better after that. Though we um yeah we struggled pretty big time this year, and you know it was uh, super frustrating. But uh, I like to think we can have a good crack at bouncing back next year. What lessons are learned this year? Because you've had a few over your time, and you know the Giants have had so much success. They've been on the bottom for the first few years, so you're going up and down a bit. What did you learn this year that you haven't learned before? Oh, it was certainly the toughest year of my career, I reckon. Um, you know, like probably expecting that we we would have been better than what we were and um first year where you're not playing finals six weeks out, you know, it's um it's not a great feeling and I guess early days we knew we, we were gonna be no good, so we didn't really care. Um but yeah, it was frustrating, but you know, you try and get around the young boys and we got a good young good young group coming through, you know, twenty, twenty one year olds, so feeling pretty old there these days, but it's been um no, nah, it's still enjoying it, and I guess that's that's what I'll be there for the next few years, making sure those boys turn, you know, become the players they can. Who was the player that stood out you mate, like the most this year in your eyes? Um, oh, who'd we have? Oh, it was good to see Lekka Lear get a few games at the end of the year. He's going to be a super talent, um, great kid, great um, great character, and um, you know, he, he, I reckon he'll be a serious player for years to come. And I guess Sammy Taylor, you know, became the player that. You know, some people probably wouldn't have even known him at the start of the year, but he's um probably the best defender in the comp at the moment. So um that was great to see as well. What about that? What about that? Like, no one realizes what Slam has gone through, do they? With the yeah, like he was out. Of, I don't know. I won't touch on what it was actually called, but essentially he lost half his glute because you don't know what it was called. Yeah, I don't know. What it's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go there. He lost half his glute though. Yeah, he was uh he was battling. Yeah, he was, he, I remember standing next to him in the chair and. He looked pretty gaunt and frail, that's for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, he was in a world of hurt. And, you know, he couldn't run and couldn't do weights. He lost, you know, 15 kilos or whatever it was. And, and then he comes back and it just goes whack. He's so a it's gun. good to see. Do you play on him at training now? A little bit. You know, not heaps, but um, when we do, it's pretty competitive. You get into him or Yeah, oh, yeah we have, have a, good, a couple we of have blows. We have good banter, mate. We, um, I, I sort of just peg him down a couple of notches because he, he thinks he's pretty good, which he is, but um, I just like to tell him where he's at sometimes. And, <laughs> oh, do you get dirty with him? Uh, we might have a good battle this preseason, actually. I'll, uh, I've sort of been winding him up the last couple of weeks. That's great. While we're on the topic, has there been a bloke that you just fucking love playing on that's no longer at the club? <laughs> so let's get right into it. <laughs> like, you know when you're at training and everyone else respects him, but you just fucking can't wait to just take him down at training? Oh. Because it gets competitive at training. You know, oh, some blokes are fighting for spots. It gets just as competitive because you, you don't want to be spending the next, you know, five hours with him knowing that you got rolled. So, um Oh, no, I don't know. There's, there's certainly a few blokes I've got pretty angry at at training. Um, Who gets you going? Oh, well, Matty Buntine always, you know, played me pretty tight. We, we had some good battles. Um, Big shout out to Bunce as well. Congratulations to the boys. He's a he's great a man. I man. uh, just won his premiership there at the VFL and Casey. Well done, Bunce. Um, I had young Cooper Hamilton this year. Um, yeah, he, he got the job in uh, pre-season. And Jeez, what a shit job that is. <laughs> No, nah, he was good though. He, he got me a couple of times, what, certainly. He's, did he? Yeah, he's certainly, he's pretty fit and... Um, no, he's a good kid. He'll be a good, good, uh, yeah, good shutdown defender for sure. And, um, certainly he gets into me as well sometimes. Does he so give you a couple of elbows? In I, the think, I think Leon winded him up. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Leon's just stitching this <laughs> yeah. young fella up. Old nappy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Iden? How's my man going? I told everyone about Iden at the start of the year and I think everyone should know who he is now. He got injured at the end, but he had a great year. He was great. No, nah, he's, um, no, nah, I rate him super highly. He's one of the, my hardest opponents, I reckon. Um, He's uh no nah, he's just he can sort of play tall or small and he yeah, he hurt us massive when he when he when he wasn't playing because he um he usually beats the best best forward in the other team so um no nah, he's a great kid as well he's uh I think he's living it up in Vegas at the moment he's in Vegas what a crew we got Binger we got Brent Daniels there he'd be lucky to get into yeah, a couple think, of clubs with a twenty one year old plus Xavier's there um, X. Yeah, be they're, good, meeting be, a, they're meeting a few boys at Austin City Limits, which we've both done. Yeah, I think apparently there's apparently going to be a big, a big AFL contingent over there. But um, they got the suite, I think, at the NFL this weekend. You're kidding? No, what game? LA Dodgers? No, nah, it can't be Dodgers. <laughs> Who's the LA? It's not. It's the Rams. 
The yeah, Rams. No, nah, Rams playing. Rams are playing. Oh, I could tell you. I've they got the sweet, the uh, side in the sweet, mate. Oh, you're joking. No, I'm not joking. That's going to hurt me watching that. Yeah. I, mean, I love that. I love they'll, that. They'll, they'll, yeah, there'll be 30 bad lights for the boys each. <laughs> God, there'll be 30 plus. <laughs> they'll be getting a limo there from- uh, I hope so. From, uh, what is it called? I can't think of oh, it. There'll be an after party Hollywood Hills straight to the game. Oh, well, we're going to get to travel because that's what I'm really keen to talk to you about, travel, because you've traveled with me and, I've, and you've been, as you said, you're going to Egypt. You've gone to all kinds of places- um, what else in the year? What do we fucking need? Like, let's just. Oh, I'm a passionate Giants and Freo fan, and then just watching my mates. It was a fucking hard year this year, and then at the moment, what hurts is, and you are you a captain, right? So you obviously got to have a say in this. But there's a salary cap issue, which is fine. Too many mids. What do we fucking need? Like, what do we need? You just put your list manager hat on now, if you're allowed <laughs> to, and just say, what do we need? You don't have to name the blokes, but what do we need? Nah. Oh, we we certainly um. Yeah, we did struggle this year, and we probably did have too many mids, um, and probably struggled in the forward line as well. You know, Binger was injured the whole year, and that certainly didn't help. And you know, we got you know a few guys that aren't sure probably what their positions are at the moment, and they probably want to play midfield. So, um, probably yeah, a bit unbalanced. But you know, we we hopefully can turn that around a bit this uh, this off season. We'll lose a couple of boys like Timmy and Hops. It, it looks like, but you know. We, um, there's a couple, there's, you know, we certainly got guys who can who can come in and play that role as well. So, um, no, a couple of, couple of forwards, mate. That's what we'll be looking for, and um, you know, we're gonna nail the draft as well, and you know, hopefully get repaid pretty well if we do lose those boys. But um, pretty important off season for us. But also, we got Kingsley coming in, and really looking forward to, you know, it'll look, it'll look like a different club and different team next year. Um, with the way we we go about it, so hopefully we can uh, turn it around. I don't know enough. I don't know really anything about Kingsley. Have you met him? And what is your first uh, thoughts of him when you like? You know, you what do you call it? You when you go on a date? Initial impression. Yeah. What's the what is the word I'm looking for here? I'm really <laughs> struggling to spit this out. I don't know. Um, yeah. First impression might be. Like. <laughs> what uh, was he like? Like he's a fucking big unit. Yeah. No, he's he is. He um. No, he's he's obviously got an awesome footy brain and highly respected. Got some. Oh, um, that's the vodka. Look at that vodka <laughs> soda grapes just it's burping out of the TFG over here. Four point two percent. They are four point two percent. No carbs, no sugar, no gluten. Get them up, yeah. And nah, nah. He, I think the way we play our footy will look a bit different. Um, you know, I, I ran into Dimmer last night. Actually, he's he's all he's all wraps room, and you know, he's bloody flat that he's leaving. So, um, no, nah, it'd be awesome to have him. And you know, I've, I've met him for ten, you know, twenty minutes, and. Um, can't wait to get into training. What was his? What was his? Um, like where was he before? It was Richmond, wasn't he? he was at Richmond. What last was he? Was three he, or four years. What yeah. coach was he? What line? Uh, back line. Back line. So yeah. they've just put Rutten back in that slot. I see. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah. big Benny Rutten's back in the in yeah. the house. There, there you go. go. So he's going to have a defensive mind. That's good. Yeah, that's good. No, Do you, be good. You can't really give the game plan out here on the, as American Aces. But I wouldn't know it yet, mate. Yeah, that's exactly right. But what is it that's exciting? What is what is the one thing that stood out to you when he said, "Toby, fucking stick with us, mate. We're going to do this." Oh, I guess he's, you know, he likes to play that, you know, attacking, you know, front half chaos sort of footy, um, probably similar to what Richmond and um, teams like, you know, Melbourne probably as well. Um, so, no, yeah, it'll be probably different to how the Giants have played the last, you know, eight to ten years. Fucking hell. What, that's, that is something. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like a passionate fan now, right? So there's the Ferrari. And Leon, Leon knows what the, like Leon was there for half the year, but there's the Ferrari and then there's the, what, the, then there's the Toyota fucking Camry 1989 that I used to drive. You didn't really know what you're getting this year, to be honest. So I'm really excited to see blokes like you and B- Brent Daniels. No one knows much about Brent Daniels. Well, they do, but he didn't play this year. He's been a massive, like he'll be a massive in, won't he? Yeah, he's, he's, uh, no, he's got all, he's, he could surprise a few. I reckon he'd be uh, one of the better small forwards if he can get fit and firing and, um, super talented, super quick, fit, and pretty tough as well. And mm. chirpy, chirpy, little, chirpy bastard. little bastard. <laughs> he used to chirp me. Oh, fucking tell you what, he got me as well. I used to get into him and say, You, you know, you little midget. And he goes, How many games you played, mate? <laughs> oh, fucking I haven't played a game at the club yet, but he got me. He's a star. And then he goes out and kicks goals in big finals. Now, here's a statement from a teammate. It's very important for me to read this out because a lot of people, they don't know you, but. They wish they did, but they really want to tune in. Now, this is a statement from a teammate. Your job at the end of this is to guess who it is, yeah. and it's also a nice statement. Toby is the most wrongly judged person in the AFL because the media <laughs> like to do so. His brand at the Giants should be globally 
known. He is the most loyal, hardworking, passionate player who has high standards and doesn't tolerate weakness. He hates weak minds. <laughs> and then on the side, he's always learning something. Reads the AFR, does work experience, and meets people in business cons- all the time. Who's that from? It's a good statement. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. Eddie nice Field. words. Eddie Field. <laughs> yeah, Eddie. Nice words. <laughs> good words, don't I? I just spat off. I was fucking trying to spit them out there. There's a couple of spelling mistakes. I copied and pasted. I don't know. You said, um. But it, it, it's spot on. Like, we'll talk, you can guess in a second, but his brand of the giant should be globally known. Is it Matty DeVore? It's Matthew DeVore. Yeah, he's, yeah like, it sounded like him. Yeah, did you get that because of the terminology? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a great and big shout to Matty, but it fuck it was when he sent that. I go, you got any dirt? This is how it come about. I said, have you got any dirt? And he's just a fucking ripper. And he just sends me this and I go, mate, you've just summed it up for me. I couldn't really spit that out. <laughs> on, you know, I'm not that good with putting it down on writing, but he is right. You're fucking loyal. You work hard. You're passionate. you got fucking high standards and, and you don't like weak. Units and weak, <laughs> weak-minded individuals, do you? So, the- oh, you can tolerate them, mate, from time to time. But <laughs> nah, as, nah, as long as they're getting better, mate, that's that's what you need. It is. Now, you're also doing a lot of things away from the footy club, and this is what will lead into – you've done a lot of work experience at different places. Do you want to touch on what Toby Green does away from the football club that people might not have known over the last 10 or so years? Oh, yeah, I guess you slowly build into it. Um, first few years, you, you do next to nothing and you're sort of just enjoying your footy. Um, but then, you know, you slowly start to realise you probably need to have a think about what's going on after footy here. And first few years, probably got myself in a little bit of trouble as well. So I had to um, probably – that probably made me think of it a bit earlier than what I, what I would have. Um, but, no, nah, I, I do like my business stuff. Always done uni and finished that now and just started my MBA and um, – Guys like Maddie have been massive in helping me with, um, you know, different things in Sydney, meeting people, a few um, b- different business ventures through athletic ventures and and whatnot. Um, so it's been awesome, you know, especially in the hub in I think twenty twenty in Perth, um, or twenty twenty one. I don't know which yeah, one. Yeah, twenty twenty was my last year, but then you had another. Oh no, it was twenty twenty one. Yeah, was it? Yeah, yeah it was twenty twenty one. Sorry, because I was there. Last year. Yeah, so being with Maddie during that, you know, I was pretty close with him and, you know, he's helped with me a lot. But, um, no, nah, I love, love that stuff outside of footy and it's super interesting to me and meeting people who are involved in that. Um, I think you've got to have that balance outside of footy and it's, it, maybe one day after footy it's something I like to get involved in. But, um, you know, um, I certainly, uh, certainly find it super interesting and love going to meet people, have coffees or dinner with, with um, people who are, you know, been in that game for a long time. That is true. When I live with you, you were very, I mean, you fuck, you looked after me. You took me and I introduced me to so many cool people. You're very interested in, in successful people. And, um, that's one thing that stood out and you take, you know, you do make time for a lot of people. You've, you have done work experience at a couple of places. Do you want to read, you know, read a couple of those places out and what you learned and what uh, it was like? Yeah. I've done a couple, I've done a, a little bit of uh, Max Cap with, at, uh, with Brace Sikulski who, um, who's looked after me very well. And the guys at Max Cap there, aren't um, they're bloody legends and they've, uh, certainly, um, you know, more than accommodated me and met a few, fair few of those guys now, um, become quite close with a few of them. I'll have to get back in there soon. Um, or EVP, which is, um, a venture capital firm in Sydney. Uh, uh, Justin's uh, Justin's looked after us. He's, him and Maddie uh, pretty much run Athletic Ventures, so they're bloody good. Um, oh, there'll be a few more after that, but um, they're pro- they're they're some of the ones that come off the top of the mind. But you know, yeah, I guess just meeting people and learning a bit about what they do, I find super interesting. Love it. And on Athletic Ventures, for those that don't know what Athletic Ventures is and what Matt DeBoer has set up and all you blokes have invested in, what is it? How would you sum it up? And um, how's it all going? Yeah, so, well, I guess Matty sort of set it up initially. You know, he's getting access to some of these some of these deals, but, you know, he obviously, um, you know, he's, it, it was a big, uh, there's a big minimum buy-in and, uh, you know, he sort of, he couldn't afford it and no one could buy themselves, but he was getting access to this and he sort of asked a few of the boys, in, you know, he knew in footy circles and if they wanted to raise some capital and invest in some of these companies that he was talking to and, from there, it's sort of built. You know, he's got guys in cricket, soccer, basketball, you know, everything, boxing, netball. You know, he's got, you know, I think there's about 80, 90 people in the group now. And he's had some big, big investments in, you know, companies like Guzman and Gomez, Eucalyptus, um, Heaps Normal, they're non-alcoholic beer. You know, he's had some, he's had some really good, really good deals. You know, I, I mean, everyone benefits from it. Um, 
Pet Circle was another one. Um, yeah, and it's been so interesting to learn about these companies. And, you know, for a lot of these, a lot of myself and, you know, 95% of the other athletes would never get the opportunity to invest in these private companies. So um, I've loved it, mate. It's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it looks great. And he did say that. I remember when we, were, I think when I finished up, I said, How's it going? Asked him, he goes, Mate, I found what I'm looking for. You know, he's had a lot of cracks at certain things, but he's like, This is it, mate. I found yeah. it. And he's been delivering winners. I mean, I was on that Guzman Gomez call just to learn and listen yeah. to the founder. And you know, the guys running it, the CFO. I'll tell you what, Tub, the fucking numbers look juicy. Uh, yeah, make sure everyone needs to see Guzman, mate. Well, Guzman <laughs> Gomez is in a cracking feed. So, you know, yeah. put the numbers to the left. There's no doubt that that's why they're through the fucking roof. It's a cracking feed. I love it. It's yeah, the well, healthiest feed. You can get it like that. It's everywhere. Well, yeah, I, I'm in Bondi Junction. I'm only about a 10 minute, five minute, 10 minute walk to uh, my closest store. So it's it's two or three nights a week for me. Mate. What's the go to meal at Guzman? Let's get the bowl with a bit of guac and you know brown rice, mate. Healthy day, oh, happy days. Yeah, no wraps, no tacos, soft you know oh. soft shell. If I'm feeling good, mate. If I'm feeling good and dangerous, <laughs> 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 fucking oath, you're always feeling dangerous. Talking about feeling dangerous at the end of the year, there's always travel plans. Always, yeah. And we fucking love feeling dangerous at the end of the year. We've been to a couple of countries together. Go through all the countries you've been to, or maybe your trips, and then we'll start working out your top places, right? This is how I'm going to structure this. You're going to go through where you've traveled, what you really enjoyed, and then you're going to tell me your top three, and then you're going to tell me the, the best three people to go with, only teammates, and then we're going to go through a tour of Sydney because I know you'd be able to show us for a good tour. Jeez. There's a lot there, but <laughs> a lot there's a lot there, but, mate, you are the most traveled you know, man I think there is in the AFL. You've done it all. Oh, I've, yeah, I've done a, done a, yeah. Well, I guess I've been away every off season that you can, besides the COVID ones. Um, Come home early a few times. One, oh, yeah, once or twice. <laughs> mate, once or twice. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, well, my theory always was you should be going away every off. I mean, we're lucky. We get, you know, you get paid pretty well as an AFL footballer, and you know, from eighteen, nineteen, you know, you're earning bloody good cash as an eighteen, nineteen year old, and um. I think my first ever trip was with Cogs, um, Dommy Tyson and Johnny Patton. We had no idea about life or anything. And, and Cogs has booked this trip to Bali, then Thailand. We're staying in Koh Samui and it was just, we had a fucking ball. It was that fun. And like, I, I don't know why we did it, why we flew from Bali to Thailand. I, I got no idea. But um, ever since that, I said, mate, we, we I'm like, I, I should probably said it to myself. I'm, I'm going away every year. Like, just so fun and learn so much and switch off for, you know, 20, 10, whatever days it is. Um, and then you get back and it takes you three weeks to get fit. It's not, it's not too hard if you have a crack. So <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, one thing you're on years ago, mate. Just get on a fucking watt bike and work your ass <laughs> off and you'll be ready to go day one. Yeah. Well, and that's um, something I didn't realise because I come from, a, I guess, a footy club where it's like we had to run, run, run. You're like, yeah. mate, just fucking get on the watt bike. Nah, I, yeah, I guess the older you get, you, you sort of want to stay off your legs as much as you can until you really have to get going. So, yeah. Um, Nah, well, yeah, from then, I guess from, from after that first off season. Thailand, then what was the next year? Go through them. Second off season. Did we go to Mexico that year? Might have been, yeah. Oh, that, that was Might good. Been, yeah. Mexico and maybe a Port Douglas and a, where was the second one? I don't know. Third one might have been Mexico, fourth, South America, done a Cambodia, Vietnam, uh, done, oh, second one would have actually was Thailand again. Yeah. Um, the third one would have been Mexico. Fifth, fifth one, yeah, Cambodia, um, Singapore, and Vietnam. That was that was cool. Um, where else have we gone? The states. Oh, the states. The states. Yeah, the was states. That Austin. That would have been Austin that year. Yeah, that was Austin. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, that was a big one. That was with yeah, a few. Um, <laughs> big shout out to Chuck. Listen, yeah, Chuck. Oh, right, Chuck, I got to drop that Riggs hoodie <laughs> off, brother. I'm going to drop it off soon, <laughs> he mate. Wants it, he wants it. <laughs> I mean, um, that was with yeah, three or four boys at. You know, that was a, that was a big one. Um, uh, what we, uh, Europe with Cogs and Jags, that was unbelievable. That was like a soccer trip. That was unreal. And then I think America after that as well. And then um, COVID hit, so you, you miss a couple there. And then, yeah, back at it, back, back. Yeah, oh, Bali as so well. So is Bali the first time you've gone over, into, yeah, overseas since, what, 2019? Yeah, since um, America. Well, we did, me and Cogs did America and Europe, yeah. That's right. Yeah, we did the soccer and then had a little leadership camp in America. Oh, geez, talk about leadership. <laughs> we never ran that. That was leadership. That, oh, watching you boys at San Fran behind the glass. Yeah, that was um, 
No one does it better than the Giants. They got uh, the best supporters. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it, it, yeah. The um, the Pimco boys, Mark Seidner and Dan Iverson, give him a shout out there. Um, oh, and Mikey Grunger, you're probably listening. Oh, the, the Grunger Zone, how could I miss out? Oh, um, Grunger Zone is the man. <laughs> we can't miss these guys um, from Newport, California. Nah, they looked after us. It was a it was bloody amazing. I think the boys are back there. This they're they're going this weekend with them. So, um, yeah, they they'll have a ball, no doubt. Now I love how you've touched on all those places. And, and it's there's obviously a bit of party, a bit of touring, bit of you know, a bit of everything. To be honest, now break it down for me, like top three and why. You know, you got to you got to go back to three of them, but you can't go to the other ones for the rest of your life. Which three are you picking and why? Oh, pretty. I think reasonably, like South America was unbelievable. Um, there's a lot of lot of tourist stuff, but all, yeah, we had a bit of fun as well. It was with um, Aiden Core and Reese Palmer. Christian Jacks joined us late. Um, did some pretty cool stuff there that we'll pro- I'll probably never do again. Like you know, we we hired these big um, six fifty you know bikes. We we're, were motorbiking across the salt flats in Bolivia. Um, I was fucking way out of my depth. Like, <laughs> we're going off these cliffs, and I'm like, I could die here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you go on one ten across the salt flats. You can't see it. Like you just there's not. Well, you're just hoping there's nothing in the ground because. There's nothing you can see that you got all these reflections and um, that was unbelievable and, you know, something I'll probably never do again and, you know, something I'll never forget. And It's like you're in another universe. It's just not like Australia. Um, that And then, you know, we did uh, a bit of Argentina, Brazil, um, Chile. Like that was an unbelievable trip. It's, I want to do Central America next, like your Colombia's, Venezuela, Ecuador, that stuff. That's on. That's really high on the list. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's probably number one. Um, number two, I don't know. I mean, the states is awesome. Sorry, I just I tried to laugh when you said Venezuela. I was just thinking of a man that we know down at uh, <laughs> that nightclub that went over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just keep going. I fucking just got me going that <laughs> Venezuelan. Um, yeah. So the next one was so you said Argentina. Yep. Um, so that yeah, that, all, all those countries are pretty cool. It's a big trip. And, Good fun. So that would be three, rank three. No, that's one. Number one. Yeah. What's two? Oh, Europe was. You know, that was pretty. That was good fun. We were a lot of soccer stuff. You know, we're going to going to PSG training in Paris. Um, you met Mbappe. Met met my man in Mbappe. You know, yeah. he's a bloke that I used to. He's get. got my jersey actually. He'd be fucking hanging up somewhere in his house. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have your jersey? Well, it's funny story. We um. We rocked. Oh, like Cog said, you know, if we go there, like, oh, you know, oh, I must be, I love him, and uh, he goes, just bring your jersey if we ever, if we get there, because we've been speaking a couple of American uh, Aussie guys are their strength and conditioning coaches, and we've been speaking to them. Anyway, we go to watch their training, and it was a day after they had international break, so they come back and played, and they train for like fifty minutes, and we meet them in like the families, the family lobby, and Mbappe walks out. He's got his. He's got his crew walking out with him. They they got the the black um, Rolls Royce just waiting for him. One of his mates is just his driver. That's grass. It's another world. And I said, "How are you? How are you, brother? What's going on?" <laughs> <laughs> um, I said, "Oh, I got this mate for, from Australia. You play Aussie rules, and yeah, you know, he actually gave us a bit. He spoke to us for you know thirty seconds a minute, and." Took the jersey and when it went, jumped in the roll. So I can only imagine it's hanging oh, up. It's mate. hanging up in the pool room for sure. <laughs> what would you do if you put a photo up one day and it's just got the TFG just oh, hanging up? I always joke about it with Cole because I go, I wonder where that went. Oh, it could have gone out the window as soon as he left training or <laughs> could be hanging up. You just never know. Fuck, that's great. So I remember seeing the photo. How big was he in that? Like, no, nah, he- he's small. He's tiny. Um, no, nah, he's not big. Not, none of them are. And, you know, a few of them. Talking to a few of them for a while, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty unbelievable. That's experience. your man. Like, he's your man. Yeah. I've been on him since, you know, 2017. You were on him no, early. No one knew about him when I was talking. Actually, we've got a story about this. You were on him so early. Tell, tell everyone about the story about France and the Giants World Cup. I wasn't there at the time, but you, I think it was you and Jezza, wasn't it? Yeah. Tell yeah. everyone about how that went down because this is fucking cracker. Oh, so we do a big World Cup draw every year at the Giants. Um, it creates a lot of interest as a WhatsApp group and, you know, you want to be involved. <laughs> it's more the banter for the blokes. Like Pretty me, much the 10 something. blokes who aren't in don't feel a part of the club. They get bullied <laughs> in the locker room, don't they? They get bullied. Um, so 2014, I think I come second. I had Argentina. Um, 2018, me and Jez teamed up and, um, you know, big Jez is on the big contract. So, <laughs> you know, we, we weren't taking a shit pick. So I think we drew pick 12 and there's only 12 picks. So, 
um, you know, we, we coerced with, um, I think it was Setters and Harry Perham and they'd pick one or two and said, boys, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> so it was an undisclosed fee, but- um, Oh, come on, give us a bit of the disclosed fee. <laughs> oh, well, it was probably a K, maybe a K each or something. Just for the pick. Yeah, just for the pick, So yeah. you just that's just you to select. Yeah, the winning team probably, if you win, you probably collect, you know, four grand. Yeah, okay. Um, so we or we might have paid them 1200 each or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> That's how confident you were. <laughs> well, we just, you know, I wasn't taking pick 12 and I needed to be, the pick 12 wasn't winning the World Cup. And, you know, was, I sort of ran the competition. I said, Jess, we're not fucking, we're not taking this. <laughs> and he, he goes, yeah, mate, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Take me card. I'll buy the um, fucking thing. Yeah, so um, we got, we worked with those boys and got pick one, took France. The whole, the whole, you know, the whole club's against us, you know, you know fuck these blokes. <laughs> like, France can't win it. Anyway, we went on to win the World Cup and, you know, it was probably the, one of the best days of my life walking in the club the next day. <laughs> <laughs> one, of the greatest, one of the greatest moments going around. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. So, yeah, it's back on against this this year, but it's in... It's in, it's in, it's, it starts November 20, so... You know, well, while we're on it, who's going to win? You, I mean, you, you nailed it last time. Who are we... Uh, I'm on dabble now. Tommy's tips. I've got no idea oh, about soccer. I want to get on your tip. I think France and Brazil probably. France are the best team, I think, but um, they, they've had a, they've had a bit going on and probably not as settled as what they were in 2018. Brazil are, are flying. They haven't lost in you know, neither of Argentina though in 15, 20 games. Um, Brazil, you know, not as much pressure on in them I mean, in Qatar. So. Um, They'd be my top two, yeah. They're both six bucks, I reckon, mate. Bucks, <laughs> good value, mate. Good value. Um, Better than Black Caviar's son that we just backed in the, at the back oh, there. Risky's joint. Donkey, that was. A little bit of a donkey. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hang on, I might grab another vodka. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's top them up. Let's yeah. top them up. Oh, you want another grape? Oh, yeah, there's only one left. You have the grape. So in these packs with the vodka soda and boys. <laughs> Nice. They've got mixed flavours. The so I've got great. the pine lime here. Look at this. That I think is... that's the best seller there at end. Yeah, it is. Well, Callot would have told you in Bali. <laughs> he was looking tan, Callot. Oh. In fact, I've got some more mail. Yeah, there's, no, a bit of sol- might, there's a bit yeah. of solarium action going on with you. Is that true or false? Oh. oh there's a bit of mail, mate. Yeah, a couple of top ups late in the year, mate. <laughs> a couple of top ups. <laughs> You're not the only one. A few of the Frio boys have been, they were smashing the solarium as well, I hear, just wow. for finals. Well, you got, it's good, you know. It's, you don't see the sun much in winter, so you know you need to feel good. La Nina. La Nina. Oh, what a shocking year we had. So you, were you denying it, though? The Dal. I mean, big shout out to the Dal. George has given me a bit of mail. She goes... He denied it, but one day he went to the solarium and he might have <laughs> might have overcooked himself and he come home a bit red raw oh, on a, on a quiet oh, real, on up, a real yeah. winter day. <laughs> yeah, it would have been raining, I think. No, I came home and I, I pulled the undies up in in the solarium just so I could maximise my tan <laughs> <laughs> to get the glutes in. And I looked like I'd been wearing a G string in the solarium, and oh, m- the rest of my ass is red. <laughs> it's got that little that, that girl line. You know. <laughs> It looks shocking. Oh, that's great. I just come good. I remember one of the boys at school, that, when I was at EKC, one of the bo- all the boys used to go to the Solly and one of the uh, pasty boys went and he's come back to school and he's fucking red raw. <laughs> and I go, where you been, mate? And he's like, no, 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 man, nowhere, nowhere. I'm like, mate, you've been the Solly, haven't you? He's like, no, nah, man, no, no, no. I'm like, mate, you're fucking red raw. <laughs> Oh, no, it, can happen. it can happen in winter. That's great. Now back to travel number two and three. Give it to us. Yeah, so Europe two, three, oh, I don't know. There's, I mean, it's tough. Job. New York's amazing. New York's just a bit different to um one and two, and just energy, fucking just energy. We love energy. Yeah, we don't we? Just and you so, love you love energy, and you love your fucking music, right? I'm surprised. So is that why? Like, does I mean, you've got South America is one, wasn't it? Yeah, it's different. Different. It's, it's a bit different. I would have thought you were more Europe for one, but I mean, they're all close, aren't they? No, nah, I love like tell sort of off music, the grid a bit. And, tell um, them your music taste. It's deep hard. It's, it's, it's deep house. Yeah. If there's no vocals, I used to fucking. Oh, there's it. a couple, mate. Mate, couple. we used to drive the train at seven a.m. in the morning, and it's like I'm waiting for the. Mu- there's no vocals. Yeah. 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 What no, is it? Lo- what do you connect? Like, what is it? Mate, does it get you going? Just yeah, I like a good beat. Yeah, I like a good beat. <laughs> <laughs> mate, don't you fucking love a good beat? And they're loud. It's loud. Like, mate. It's not trance or techno stuff. It's just. It's just good. You know. Who taught you that? Look, where'd that come from? I don't know. I think probably just a couple of mates growing up. Um, sort of that Melbourne, 
you know, we we saw Sparksy in Europe. Um, that was that's that's pretty heavy. That's, He's got a lot of energy behind the deck. Sparksy. Yeah, he, he, he gets the crowd going. That was good fun. Um, but no, nah, I like that sort of yeah, a bit more chilled, deep house stuff. I love it. Yeah. I know you do because you fucking smash it and you love putting the windows down. You're the man. <laughs> Righto, let's go to the tour of Sydney because, and I, I thanked you a lot of times, but I can't thank you enough for, you know, when I lived with you for two years, I got to see, well, I was only there for a year and a bit because of COVID, but fuck, we did Sydney well. I felt like I clocked it. You showed me every, you know, everywhere to go. We're living in Point Piper. It was just a dream. You've done it all, I reckon, in Sydney and you've seen, you know, the, the place develop. When you got there, King's Cross was the happening, wasn't it? Oh, it was, yeah. We got two years of that. Um, is that coming back? Nah, nah. There's some restaurants and good. There's some good, uh, good stuff. Restaurants and bars going up there now, but nah, the cross will never return. Like it's a heyday, mate. <laughs> <laughs> who are the crew? Like when you're going out, eighteen year olds. Oh. Who are you hitting? The, who are you hitting the town with? Oh, take your pick. <laughs> we're eight, we're all eighteen, and Cogs, Buggy, Johnny, Jez, Dom, Tyson, fucking anyone, mate. <laughs> anyone that wants a beer. <laughs> um, well, it was, we were a bit unique in that in that sense, you know. We were all eighteen and come from no one's from Sydney and didn't know one person in Sydney. So, and we lose by a hundred, and you know that was acceptable because we were supposed to. So, you know, lose by a hundred. Who's having parties yet? Kings Cross. <laughs> <laughs> what was Kings Cross like? I don't think I've I've never been there. Oh, I I you, it's just there'd be fifty thousand people on this big strip and bars and clubs everywhere and. Obviously, there was a bit bit of trouble caused there, and that's why it got shut down. But it was good fun, good music, plenty of good music. Deep yeah. house. Oh, there, there was a, probably a bit heavier there at King's Cross. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's fucking great. Now, give me the tour of Sydney. I'll try to break this down so we can give you a group. Let's say I've got a group of my close mates. I'm a 28 year old male. There you go. There's an Instagram page out there. To give him a shout out. There's four of us hitting town, so we're going to have to need two Ubers, but. We're there for the weekend. We rock in Friday, though. Like to, you know, let's say it's a public holiday Friday. We've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Sydney. Where are we staying and where are you taking us? You're the Toby the tour guide. Yeah. What are we doing? For anyone oh. listening that hasn't been, that needs to do the TFG experience. Oh, you probably stay around the um around the beaches. Yeah, if you like your beaches, you got to stay around. What beach there. in particular? Let's probably get right. Bondi. This, Bondi you can't miss. So stay in the heart of Bondi? Yeah. Yeah, stay in Bondi. Um, maybe a feed in the city Friday night. Go for a nice feed. Um, you know, Mr. Wong's or Hugh Birds. Yeah. We love Mr. Wong's. Oh, it's fucking good, mate. <laughs> Mr. Wong's. Yeah, tell them about your horse race. So you just go and take it. This is a good oh. story. While we're on it, we're gonna go through the tour guide. We're gonna intercept these stories on the way. Um, I had a horse. You know, that was probably four or five years ago. Just before I got there, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. And but mind right. you, you didn't fucking tip me it. Oh, I didn't think it would win. I was paying 28 to 1 or whatever it was. And we're at the club and you know, I think I think a couple of young boys, I said, oh, if this wins, I'll take you to Mr. Wong's. Um, and I told the whole club, not, not many people <laughs> backed it. It's paying 28. And I think they were picking the team as well, the coaches and Amon Buchanan. With, he, he had a share as well. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear the coaches room erupt. You hear the you hear the change room erupt. Everyone's going mad. Yeah, I, had a, had a good go at it. <laughs> I don't know why, because I didn't think it would win. Anyway, I said, oh, you pick the two, you know, two first year. I think it was Will Cedarfield and maybe one, someone else. And Mr. Wong's and I, boys, That's me. unbelievable, mate. <laughs> that is so good. Um, so that was that was good. Yeah, that was good fun. The 28 buck winner when you've loaded up and, and you went each way, it was like, you're probably thinking I should have had more on it. Yeah, well, I, I, uh, yeah, that's why I didn't tell you. I'm in the punters club with my mates back home in Melbourne and I don't think I told them, so there's yeah, oh. there there some dirty looks. <laughs> oh, there would have been some messages from Chuck Ailey, no doubt. <laughs> oh, I still, I still haven't forgot it. That's fucking great. So you take the, so you go on Friday night, you've, they've got in, Mr. Wong's Friday night. Yeah, just a nice quiet dinner. So uh, quiet one Friday night? Oh, yeah, quite enough. Yeah. <laughs> First night fever, mate. It get, yeah, it gets you. Where uh, would you go for a drink or do you just go home and save it for Saturday? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's plenty of stuff going on in the city, uh, lots of bars. and It's not like Melbourne. It's a bit different. Not not, not your nightclubs as such. There's more, a lot more bars and plenty going on. Um, Saturday, uh, yeah, you wake up, you go for your swim, you feel good, you have your smoothie, coffee. Wait, let's break it down. Give it to them. Where uh, are you going for a swim? There's so many spots. 
Just oh. name the best one. They've got a car. They've got a car. Oh, Bronte's probably the best spot for a swim. There the boys love, boys love oh, that one. You just sit on that hill all day. You go for a yeah, swim, get ocean, get pool. Your, get your newspaper, get your coffee. You can um, tan the buns if you want. Off, you know, off yeah, you go. Yeah. Go for a run. You can. Big shout out to Jeddah Perryman. He's always running around oh, there, isn't he? Is he ever? Big Jeddah. He loves it. You'd see him go on the hill. He'll run past you. Um, and then... Oh, so, oh, it depends what you want. You can go to the races. Well, the 28-year-old males, I mean, no disrespect to females, but they've just identified 28-year-old males. And we we'll probably go to the races, don't you? Yeah. Ramwick's a good – if Ramwick's on, you've got a great day there. Especially if you're taking us, yeah. Bray and the boys. Oh, Bray's there. Tony Shepard runs the joint, so, you know. If we'll, <laughs> Chairman we'll, of GWS. We'll, we'll get the table if we want. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, that's that's a good that's a cracking day. So Ramwick races, fucking suit on, let's yeah, go. Feel good. Get the sun. Back a couple of winners, yeah. few donkeys. Walk, finishes about six. Yeah, walk out of there. You get you go get. Ah, uh, where do you get dinner? Maybe the Paddington in um oh. in Paddington. And you're ordering the chicken and chips. Yeah. Oh, you love that one. Oh fuck. Man. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> the chicken and chips with the iceberg lettuce. It's oh, just yeah, off good, head, isn't it? it? Yeah, that's a that's a cracking spot. Um. And then you got your, you got a few bars on Paddington if you want to go out. To, the, the pubs in Paddington are awesome. It's kind of like your um, mate, it's a bit probably a bit nicer than Richmond. I'd probably compare it to that. Um, so you can do that, or you head back into Bondi and you got your Ravisis. You got oh, you got your Bedouin in Double Bay. Well, that's mate. later. That's later. <laughs> that's yeah. That's later. Ravisis is the go-to, isn't it? Yeah, it's busy. Always busy. You uh, want to be there early-ish, like eight. Yeah, they've got some good live music down the bottom as well. Very yeah. strict upstairs. You can't be carrying on too much. Are they yeah, you go. <laughs> no, you're right. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're up there for the weekend, you're probably doing that, and then you're going Double Bay and. You got the Aurora Loke, you got your Golden Sheath. You know that those those Ardens and Brett Daniels of the world they run that joint. Uh, they love the Sheath. Yeah, I, I, I was sort of retired from that sort of. Bit stuff, of a younger crowd there, just for everyone. Like it's yeah. more your yeah, bargain 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 yeah, year olds. Yeah, Pro, yeah would, I wouldn't have been there in a while, but it's always busy around there, and and then better one. Oh, mate. let's get on better <laughs> one. We used to call it "What's for doing" because it's what's doing. Spelt, what's doing. Better one is like a what's the what's the cuisine what's the restaurant Le- Lebanese Lebanese yeah, cuisine Lebanese, very yeah. nice and then out yeah. the back open the doors of yeah. the doors to heaven we used I think to call Cogsy it. had his uh, bucks party there on the weekend. Oh, um, did he? From all reports, uh, I think I think uh, Big Dane was DJing. Oh, wow. for an hour after closing time. Dane's a fucking funny man. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's that's probably what you do, and then. Yeah, you get home, mate, whenever you can. And, yeah, that, and it goes late, like not Sydney, just for yeah, people. There's not many like that, yeah. So it's a late one. It's a 3, 4 a.m. if you yeah. want it. Um, yeah, which is different to Melbourne. You know, you got you got your plethora of optimism in Melbourne. Oh, they're yeah, they're God, everywhere. Yeah, they don't get going till 2. <laughs> I mean, I think electric opens at 12. Yeah. So, um, yeah, then Sunday, uh, you probably get the Coogee Pav for a bit of a recovery session. Oh, mate. So you've just fucking nailed it, honestly. You've yeah. nailed it. You've nailed it. Bondi, Friday, go for a swim, check in, go to Mr. Wong's, maybe have a few drinks, save the batteries, go to Bronte for a swim on Saturday morning. You're going to Randwick, the races. You're getting a really fucking nice table. You're calling Tony <laughs> Shepard up or you're calling Tony Green over here. <laughs> Big tub will hook you up. Then afterwards, you go to Paddington. You're getting your chicken chips and you're getting iceberg lettuce on the side. <laughs> you're then going to Double Bay, the Sheaf or the Royal Oak, and then you're walking to Better One and you're getting a booth. You're perching up. If not, you're at the bar. You're there till three or four, and then you're going to just save the batteries in the morning, sleep in, and then hit the Coogee Pav on a Sunday. It, there is no better establishment in Sydney on a Sunday, is there? No, nah, just a, it's a good debrief there, mate. You get your fucking get, hell. Get your Hell's Bells pizza and oh. away you go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I can tell stories now, so I might as well tell you. I remember, I remember I was battling the calf injury and, you know, you're at home being elite. I didn't tell you what was going on and I – um. Had a couple of mates in town and they said, what are we doing? And I said, I've got to behave. I was home by, you know, 10, 30, 11. I don't think I told you this. And, <laughs> uh, you know, it got away from me, the path. It got away from me. I was in rehab. They said, you know, the off day was Monday. I thought, yeah. fuck, long-term injury. Like, I'm allowed to drink. Yeah, of course. But I uh, got a lift in with you the next day and I just never forget it, mate. We lost our strength and conditioning guy or like the rehab guy. 
and they've thrown in, uh, you know, Brad Newton, who's a, just a champion bloke. We love him, and I hope he's listening because fuck, he's a he's a workhorse, this bloke. And I love that. Man, I yeah. love that they've employed him because this is why. And I was doing me, you know, seven fifty meter swims before he got there, and he goes, "Yeah, you going, mate?" I said, "Yeah, good. I'm dusty as fuck. I've been at the Coogee Pav, you know. <laughs> I've been there all day with Benny and Risk, and I'm showing him a good time." And he goes, mate, we've got an 1,800 metre and 75 – it was a 1,875 metre swimming session. He goes, you're right with that, mate? And he show, I go, yeah. Yeah, mate, no worries. And I was in that pool, like, fuck, I, all the boys would have been doing recovery looking at me. I was fucking swimming backwards, <laughs> I tell you. He is a machine. He'd have the boys in rehab. You almost might as well – qualify for the olympics he's got you on the swimming program he's a fucking beast that bloke yeah he's good he's good newt he's uh bloody good at his job he's he's uh he's getting us big and strong there he is and you can't say no to the could you pav though can you like on a sunday that joint's humming nah, i understand where you're at mate especially you got the boys up in town you gotta oh, look after you gotta look after him i love that you've summed that up there you go anyone that wants to uh go to sydney there's a tour for you friday to sunday on a platter now footy quickly we've already tacked on it but skipper three blokes very unique for people on the outside. How was it being one of three and uh, what are the positives of being one of three versus just being standalone? No, it was good. Um, no, we actually, it worked re- really well this year with Chook and Cogs and um, had good fun. You know, th- those boys are bloody good and they compliment, you know, sort of complimented each other in different ways, um, you know, and get along with them both really well. So, no, nah, it was good. We um, it was obviously a tough year, and you know, I mean, those guys just sort of helped me, and I probably helped them in some ways as well. But um, yeah, it, it it was a bit different, and you know, I think a couple of other teams might have you know co captains and things like that. But um, no, nah, we worked well, and like to yeah, you know, keep building on it. James Hurd, he's our favourite. I mean, growing up, fucking loved Hurdy. He's at the Giants. Oh, mate, if he was getting the coaching gig, I would have almost been out there doing time trials, trying to get myself back on the list. I fucking love Hurdy. What was he like inside the club and how did it all come about? How did he, you know, get back in the club and how did the boys respond to that? Because there's an elite panel. Yeah, it was through Spike and then um, he's obviously bloody good at what he does and very professional and, you know, very smart and um, – no, he's, he looked after us very well, Hurdy, and you know I still speak to him now. And you know, had lunch with him the other day. He's um, no, he's 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 someone I'll keep in touch with for a long time. He's he's a good man, and you know, really switched on with you know everything that's going on out on for him outside of footy, and um, hopefully he gets the bombers job and wait and see what happens there. But um, I'm sure he'll do well wherever he does. Fuck, I hope he does. Oh, I want him back at the Dons. It'd just be unbelievable. What, what did he teach you? Like, like, you know, for a bloke that wasn't there, you see Hurdy roll in. Most of the other blokes were there when I was there. What was it that Hurdy brought? Because he was, he was come on as a leadership consultant at the start of the year, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. Um, no, I guess he's got a holistic a- approach to, you know, um, how the, how a club should run and how you should, you know, mould yourself as a player and what you should be working on. Um, you know, you can get pretty, you know, self-driven and think, you know, I'm going to do this and that's how it is. But, you know, he sort of teaches you – you know, other things you should work on and, you know, things that the club or myself or the leadership group could do better. Um, so, no, he was bloody good. He was bloody really like good. a real open mind approach. Yeah. Yeah, he's got good ideas and, you know, some that, you know, I hadn't heard before. So, no, I did enjoy it. Fuck, that's great. What What, what is it, the one thing that he – I mean, he would have loved working with you. He's a fucking gun. He played midfield, forward, kicked goals. You know, there's a lot of attributes, very sim- you know, a few similarities. What Did he teach you anything individually that just stood out for you? You're like, fuck, or was it just more that bloke you can talk to with about scenarios consistently? Yeah, it's probably more just that stuff, you know. He, he did, he, you know, he probably didn't want to get involved with the footy stuff too much and didn't want to, you know, probably step on Leon or Spike's toes. Um but no, as I said, the stuff that sort of stuff he was um, he sort of opened my mind a bit too as well. So um, I'm sure the footy stuff, you know, it's it's certainly there, and he would have loved to jump in. But he's, he's probably uh, you know probably been a bit conservative and and you know did want to step on toes. Now let's give him a pump up because we love him. People are saying he's been out of the game too long. He's not in touch with it. You just touched on how he's got the holistic approach and he's very good. He's got the leadership consultant. He's got a, you know, he's got a great head on his shoulders and he's been fantastic for the boys at Giants. Why do you believe he should get the job at the Bombers? No, I I can't see why he wouldn't. You know, he's he's you know he knows what he's talking about. He's very good. He's he's got a. Yeah, you know, he, he thinks about everything in the football club, not just the players. You know, he thinks about how the club should run, how your program should look, um, what you need to get better at. Um, 
and I, you know he's a, he's a good man. You know, very professional, and you know, obviously players will look up to him. Um, you know, guys our age, you know, you know, he was uh, he was he was the beast. Now he's growing up. Oh, he's the king. So, um, I, yeah, I, I can't I can't see why he wouldn't be a great candidate. You know, they'll, they'll obviously go through that, but um, nah, I hope he does get it, and I'd uh, I'll, yeah, I wish him all the best. Yeah, well said, mate. Well said. I love that. It's fantastic. How do the Giants crack the top four next year, Tub? That's my last question for footy. And then we're going to go to one more, uh, a few questions from the Aces. And they've got a few things, you know, you don't come on this show empty-handed, mate. You go home fucking with a few prizes. And like I said, Milwaukee Tools have just looked after us today. We're about to drop some things. It's a brand new uh, little partnership here. We've got the Rick Sower in the house. We've got the Caps. We've got the Vodka Soda ends. It's all happening here in Melbourne in the Roller Media van. But before I wrap up the footy, because I've got to ask you before I see these questions, from the Aces community. How the fuck do the Giants make top four next year? Like, come on, let's just get straight in it. You're 29 now. But, well, we're nearly 29. Like, we're very... Mate, we're running out of fucking time. We need TFG with a medal around his neck. What do you want? How do we get to top four? Oh, it's, it's take a bit of hard work. Um, you know, I, I think our game will look a lot different um, to what I'm used to. And, you know, I haven't, I haven't done one session yet with Adam Kingsley in charge. So, um, well, you know, it'll look different to what I'm used to, but... You know, we we got a bit of work to do, no doubt about that. And um, you know, sort of things we mentioned earlier in the in, in the uh, podcast. But um, oh, a lot of hard work, mate. And you know, it doesn't just click. It doesn't just happen like that. So uh, we got a good young brown bunch coming through, and you know, and us older boys as well. Got to got to got to play our part and help them, and and uh, make sure we get the best out of ourselves. But we got a bit of work to do and, you know, I'm looking forward to it, but I can't tell you how we're going to play, mate, because I, I don't really know it's yet. A great, yeah, it's a, it's a terrible question for me, to be honest. You're right. He's only just fucking rocked up. You've only probably had one coffee with him. Now, before we go to the Aces community, how are you going with that drink? You need another one? I'll get you one more because it's about to fucking heat up here, Tub. It's about to heat up. There'll be some stuff here, won't there? Oh, there's not too much. There's not too much. Okay. I'll- I go easy on you, mate. We're fucking live here. We can't go too hard. We're warming you up. We want you to come back, mate. It's not a one and done. This is a fucking, this is a sports club. We want you back. But we know this and it's well documented between anyone that knows you and even your doll, Georgia's sent, I, got, I haven't gone, she's been great, PG rated, but we know that pound for pound, you believe, and I'd probably do believe as well, you would be the greatest street fighter in Australia. <laughs> yes or No. No, oh, I have said it from time to time. Yeah, I, I mean, to, I need to train for a bit, but um, oh, it's something I could, yeah, aspire to be. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, as I said to you, mate, I want to be your, you know, your not your manager. That's Paulie Connors and the boys at Connor Sports. But there's an opportunity that are popping up. You're seeing these celebrity fights. We're seeing it with the Paul <laughs> brothers. You know, is there anyone out there that you just love to go one on one? And like a lot of them do. You know, this is what I'm thinking for you because I've been having manager hat on. They're thinking about boxing fights. You know, sell the tickets, make a fuckload of cash, and it's a shit fight or it is a good fight. Who knows? Depending on who's in there. And everyone tunes in because of the name, right? But I'm thinking more octagon. You know, you want the street fight vibe, don't you? Like you'd rather. Oh. I mean, you. you or, no, what do you I like want? My boxing. I like my boxing. So yeah. you're boxing, or you got the octagon? No, I'll go boxing. I'm a traditionalist. Well, you, so you, can you street fight with a box? No, you can't. But you know. that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to think of a way. Or would you prefer it on the street, mate? Because before I get to your target. Who's where, my target? I don't know. Yeah, we'll work it out. I'll tell you. The manager's got a few in mind. Um, nah. Oh, I mean, I, I do like my boxing. I always has, you know, sort of loved it as a kid, and uh, always watched it, and you know, still like watching all the um, all the main events that roll around. But um, I don't know, mate. No. So if we're doing this celebrity fight. It's a boxing match. I'm well, the- trying to get your biggest name, so you, yeah. can, you know, make your most cash. Okay, so someone you get you get a good chance against. Okay, yeah, we'll start. Who's one bloke you just love? It? Yeah, no, come on. There's no one. No, nah, no, but look, it's going to sell tickets. So you can't just say me. Clearly, you'd bash me, and I'm not going to sell tickets. Who's a guy that actually is tough and it would sell? And it, no, you know, people that don't oh, know no, both of you. That's, that's not that's not my job. I'll just rock up. Okay, oh, I love <laughs> it. Love it. This is great. And who's training you? Pick a trainer. You've trained with a few. In the off season, you work fucking hard. Like I said, oh, three weeks on the bike and in the big gym. Big Jeffy Phoenix looked after me. He's a good man. Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. So yeah. Phoenix in your corner. He's in my corner. Yeah, good inner west man. This is what I'm thinking. Now I don't even know this bloke, but I've heard rumours that this could happen. Money Munster. 
I don't, I don't know Munster. I don't, I don't know him yet. I don't know him yet. But it's AFL, NRL. Got the TFG. We got Money Munster. Both fucking iconic. You know, in the in the game. I don't know how. Um, you know, if he's the bad boy, but I just think it would sell. Yeah, well, would you, you get probably, that? Yeah, the AFL and NRL would work in Sydney, I think. Yeah, um, that would work. Would you? Would you get the job done? Is, oh, he, is yeah. he a bit heavier? He'd be a bit heavier, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, great. No, I watched the Barry versus um, Sonny fight, and uh, I met Sonny after that. Actually, shortly after it, he's a bloody good bloke, and um, yeah, he's 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 really he's really into it, and. Um, it was flat for Barry that night, but um, you know, Sonny's obviously gonna. He'll have a couple more. He's a fucking powerful man, isn't he? What you break that one down? I was a bit rattled there. He, I mean, they're big boys, so just one on the chin and you're done. Oh, if he gets you, sweet, yeah, yeah, that's the best thing about. What's it. the Look, TFG doing? Like, you know, you're in. The, let's say we haven't got the opponent yet, but now, hey, I'm promoting it. So if anyone wants this, come to me. I'm going to set this up. Would you do it post? Would you do this in the off season in your prime to sell more tickets? Yeah, of course. Oh, of listen course. to this. We got it right here. So I'm telling everyone right now, come to me. We'll set it up because I reckon I could sell. Oh, I could fucking sell, Marvel. <laughs> mate. Marvel Stadium. I could sell that fucking thing out if you put yourself on the main card. I've got to find. Big. Cambosis can't sell it second time round. So oh, well. It would be big, but if we can get the TFG, we need someone on the undercard, but we need a big opponent, someone that everyone's yeah. scared about. Well, you know, I think, I think yeah, AFL and NRL is big, and I think you've got to take it to Sydney though, because the, the you know the Sydney siders aren't travelling to Melbourne. You might get a few. I don't mind being in Sydney. The new stadium, what's it called? I don't want to. Yeah, Tony Shepherd again. Oh, no, is that Tony Allianz? Shepherd? Yeah, oh, yeah. Tony, you're a man. He's a, yeah. He's, what's his Allianz? Allianz. He's he runs Sydney pretty much. Oh, he's a Tony. man. He's Tony. A good man. How many tickets do I need to sell there? Uh, I don't know. Is that 30, 40,000? It's a nice stadium. It might be more, 50, 60. I don't if that know. NFL come, you'd probably put it there. They reckon that's the best stadium almost. It's yeah. almost surpassed. I'd sell it out. Optus. I'd sell it out. Yeah, well, we could try. <laughs> you'd need to give me a bit in the – you'd need to say some – you'd need to do some dirty things in the, oh, in the lead up. That, mate. <laughs> whatever's required. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Oh, I reckon we get it done. I reckon we can get it done next year, especially if you boys don't fucking make the finals. We're getting it yeah, done, I reckon. There's a big, yeah, there's a big training period. Geez, you'd be able to make some cash. Now, let's go to the community before we wrap up at the end with some fucking treats for you. Is it is – it, why is that coming? You're a great man. Yeah, I think he. I think he's in. Uh, where is he? He's in Ibiza at the moment. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah just um, selling his tickets for cost price. <laughs> <laughs> is it true Oreo doesn't know how to sit? Your dog, you're in love with. He's got no fucking idea. He, yeah, <laughs> he's a fuckwit. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't listen to him. He listens to me. Is he an obedient dog? Of course he is, mate. I haven't walked in with the lead since he was about two months old. <laughs> Who are your hardest three matchups and why? I'm going wide here. So I'm just going to pluck them out. All right. Who are your hardest three matchups and why? Oh, in, in my career, um, I've always said Dylan Grimes is bloody tough to play on. Um, tall, quick, you know, a bit bigger than me. Um, uh, uh, Dane Ramp, he's, you know, he's similar as well. He's tough and he makes you earn it. Um, who else? Who oh, there's, there's plenty of bloody good ones, plenty of hard ones. Um, Luke Brown, who just retired from Adelaide, yeah. I've always used to struggle against him. I just maybe it's because we always played shit, but um, I, I um, blame the mids. It could have been, yeah. <laughs> 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 no, he's he, he's tough and you know he's yeah really diligent and didn't give didn't give give a fuck about getting the footy. It was just all yeah. about you know stopping your opponent. So, uh, but there's about there's about twenty more after that. It, it's tough work. Yeah, it'd be tough work <laughs> playing on you, mate. Fuck it, no. Used to laugh playing against you when I was at Freo. Fuck it, no. Um, right, let me just read the question before I read it out. I mean, this is a Giants one. So, big Giants fan here. We love the Giants. Being a Giants fan, will you stay at the Giants until you retire? Well, that's the plan. Yeah, signed for another four years, and um, that's that. That's you know, I signed for a reason. You know, I, I want to get back and play finals, and yeah, I have a crack at you know making another granny, winning another, winning the flag. So. Um, that's my goal, and you know that's 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 all I want to do in my next four, five, six years, whatever it is. As Matty DeBoer said, one of the most loyal blokes going around. That is spot on. Now this guy Maxi Watkins, that, that was from two five one Logan. Thanks for the question. Now Maxi Watkins has written. I'm going to try to get it out of here because he's got a few spelling mistakes. It's like I've written it after having about fucking fifteen of these vodka soda ends there, tub. But what was the thought process in kicking people when marking? Because I loved it. <laughs> now it's a good one because it's something you would have done when you were a junior. Yeah, I've, I've done it my whole my whole career, my whole life. I was pretty flexible, you know. I was, I was acrobatic. Um, 
I, I always did it. Always used it pro- to protect my space, and um, I thought it was quite a good skill until they, um, you know, brought it up in a few big games and outlawed it. Um, but I can't do it anymore, so I've just put it away. What's the new technique? Just fucking. I, just got, I guess you got to use the knee and try, <laughs> try and get a jaw if you can. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That is fucking good. How's the Harley going from Tub underscore Nation? <laughs> I don't know who that is, mate. But Harley. Guessing- no, I've got the um. I bought Jez's scooter when he moved back to Geelong because he, he wasn't needing that. Um, what is it? A Honda fucking one, fucking probably two five. <laughs> You just mow around Bondi in that? Oh, just straight in, mate. No car park. Oh, you're the king of that. Just straight <laughs> on. Fucking rig out. No fucks given. Now, let's go to the... Actually, Ivan, this might be a question. Let me see if someone else has asked this question because I don't want to steal it. But it's about the... um. Here it is. It is. Jolly Keen. Thank you, Jolly, because I'm thinking like you, brother. Do you think you had Mark of the Year? Because I did. Yeah, I had the speech ready, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you fucking been robbed there, mate. Yeah, yeah, probably was. Yeah, you've hit you've hit the roof of Marvel. I thought the talk last year. I was more fun about that. The talk from seventy after the siren. I don't know what I'm going to have to do next year, mate. I know it's going to have to be special. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to have to do something. Oh, even round one, I think you. Well, not round one. Your first game, you sat on someone's head in the wet. That was that wasn't. It didn't look as good, but it was as hard as it gets from a difficulty level. You know, if you if you're in the diving for Olympics, it's a fucking ten. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, nah, it is what it is, mate. Just um. I just rock up next yeah, year, mate. You're filthy. Look, you, 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 I was watching the coverage and I'm I sitting wasn't there. Filthy. No. But, you, but no, but like, you know how when they count down, did the heart start beating? Oh, like, I was getting ready to walk up. Yeah. I was getting ready to walk up. <laughs> 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 I, I was a bit shocked. I think what's hurt you is the landing. You've landed, as you said, you've, you're going too well. You should have landed on your, like Gary Moorcroft, you should have j- yeah, landed on special. your back. That was a good one. Um, That's the greatest. I didn't mark. think it was, I didn't think it was a good year for the mark of the year. So, um, Nah, it is what it is, mate. Just move on. Next year. You've been robbed? Yeah, you've been robbed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Fucking hell. They give you nothing, do they? Do, do umpires decide that one? Oh, I'd be Gil, I reckon. Be oh, Gil. Surely Gil on his <laughs> way out can just give you something. Oh, I don't know. There we go. Trenny Symes. <laughs> I think I've said that right. What's Tony's favourite beer? Favourite beer? Oh, I love my great Northern Super Crisp. You and Jez are love a Northern. Yeah, they're good. Real good. Just go down well. Oh, especially, you know, you can, you can, if you're drinking during the day, you can have. You How know, many beers do you have before you get the vodka soda ends out? Oh, 10, 10 to 12, yeah. How funny is that? <laughs> I remember a fucking story. You'll love this. Zach Clark, stiff, mate. I'm reading it out. We did the old responsible alcohol chat. You know, you, 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 they get those blokes that come in. Anyway, I'll never forget this. I fucking know. And they go, how hey, many drinks are you going to have in the break? You know, like, what's a big night look like? Everyone's tossing around the three and four and six, and everyone's just fucking lying to each other. You know what I mean? Like everyone's going, yeah, six, to eight beers. That's a night. You know, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I remember, I don't know who he's talking to, one of the coaches, but they sat him down and he goes, we, "We've identified you as the the high risk. You know, you're going to Falls Festival. I was going with him." And he goes, how many beers are you going to have on your first night at Falls? And he goes, oh, fuck, 24 to 30. <laughs> and, and the fucking coach, the coach lost his mind, mate. He goes, what? He goes, well, I think you got a problem. He goes, what are you talking about, mate? You told me to be fucking honest. <laughs> That's good, boy. Big oh, daughter. so big shout out to Clarkie for full integrity. It's, a, it's an honesty play, that one. What are the Giants capable of next year? We've kind of touched on that. Um, Jakey, Piani, eight. Thank you for the question. This is probably a better one. What's it like being the best small forward in the comp? Now, you might be humble here, but let's just say, look, I, I think you are. You're the most fucking dynamic. What have you done to get there, actually? Because as a mate, I don't ask these deep questions. We just catch up, have a laugh, and carry on. You've turned yourself from a midfielder to a forward. Like, it's a fucking you, – you're a, you're a weapon. How have you done it? Like, you obviously work your ass off. There's yeah. a lot of me- there's a lot of mental stuff going on as well. Like, what are you doing? Oh no, I guess so. It's something I've just been working on for the last six, seven, eight years. Um, always had a, you know, I was always decent pack mark, you know, one on one player growing up. Um, I think we had about twenty mids on the list at you know twenty fourteen <laughs> that were probably top five picks. So. Um, I thought a bit of bit of find another position, <laughs> even um, though you were nab- you nab- rising or you got you got suspended. Yeah, suspension. You would have won that. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. DT Daniel Talia, the big fella. Yeah, the spoiler. Are you fucking the spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> He's robbed you. Another robbery. Yeah, uh, that's all right. Um, no, nah, it's just something I worked on for a long time, and um, 
I love it. You know, the more I embraced it, the you know, the better I got and working with a lot of good 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 forwards around me. Um I guess no, there's a lot to it, you know, it's it's probably the hardest position in the game. Um I think most people would, would probably agree with that. Um so it takes a lot of hard work and, you know, um uh, there's, there's obviously some natural ability that comes into it, but um I, I love I love playing in the forward line, and I love the um you know that there's some some elements to it that I really enjoy. Um, but to be honest, it's not something I did a whole heap as a kid. I, I, it was there's some there's some attributes of, about it that I, that I used, but um, just yeah, it's something that I've, I've continued to work on and you know b- become better and better at. Because as a mate growing up, obviously we went through the juniors together. You just that fucking gun on baller. Everyone kind of rid you off early days. You got your gig top. Maybe pick, what top, pick 10, 11? 11, yeah. 11, everyone was like, that's still probably too high. You come in, you're having 30 every week in a losing side. But then to go forward and do what you did, I reckon there's one thing that as a mate, I used to watch you, you couldn't kick straight early days. You've done it, but now you don't miss. Like, what have you done to be able to, because you're a fucking dead eye dick. It's like, if you miss, I've seen you on the tally, you're like, fuck. Yeah, no, I, I, it's a lot of practice. If I miss one that I should kick, you know, within that, you, you know, punish yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking not happy, mate. <laughs> You're gonna hurt someone. <laughs> well, it's there. hard to get a you know a good set shot. You know, they don't just grow on trees. So, um, no, nah, it's a lot of practice. That's probably all it was. Yeah. And, so um, for the look, because this is a great lesson for young kids listening that want to be like Toby Green. When you say practice, there's a lot of talk about it. You can only have ten kicks now. Are you just fucking out there kicking, kicking, kicking. Oh, it's more like getting my routine sorted and you know working on what how I felt best running up and. You know how far I'm kicking from. What's my routine look like? Um, you know, am I kicking a snap? Am I kicking a drop punt? Um, yeah, just you know, and, and and my routine changes. You know, every second year. You know, I think so. You know, even when I'm kicking, a, you know, trying to kick a drop punt from 55, or you know, I, it's not really a routine. It's more making it up and trying to just generate power. So, um, it's just constant work on and and uh, take a lot of pride in it and. If you're getting a set shot, you know, 30 out, 45 degree angle, and I miss that, then fuck it, not much makes me more angry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's good that you, I think the main thing is you take pride in it. You know, you see a lot of blokes that just go back and flop around. You take a lot of pride in it. It is a lot of practice. Are they the main, pre- you know, the main things you're preaching here yeah, for the, the juniors? Yeah. And I guess, yeah, practice at training and have set shots against Brent Daniels and, you know, I can't look him in the eyes. If I, if I lose that, I, I can't, I just can't look at him. So I, uh, he'd probably just thank a bit. Yeah. So that, that's the thing. So put something on the line at training with a bloke that makes you fucking angry, that puts you under pressure. It's nothing like a game, but put something oh, on the line. Buying him lunch or a coffee is probably almost worse than losing <laughs> a game. <laughs> Webby underscore one, one, one. What opposition player would you like to fight the most? Oh, oh, like you know, in the in the fight that I'm selling there, you know, with Tony Shepherd and the boys, is there anyone that we can tee up? Is oh, there? We used that- to have good ones with Jez on Mad Monday, so maybe maybe we'll bring that back. Jez at Cameron, now you've never beaten him. Oh, oh no, mate, no. we've had this chat with Jez. He reckons he's you'll come all night, but you just you just get tapped. He taps you out like a little bitch. No, nah, he do- he doesn't. He tapped me out one two, probably be two one my way. Um, <laughs> he's strong. I'll give him that. He is strong. <laughs> he reckons that he's got you fifty times on Mad Monday. We've had a few. Yeah, we've had some good ones. <laughs> Although it only counts if you get it on camera. So there you go. Je- Jez is a strong bastard, isn't he? Oh, it's almost as strong as you you'll come across. Are you saying that you would never lose to anyone pound to pound? That's the that's yeah, the whole call. He's, he's got 10, 10, 15 centimeters and what do you weigh? Fifteen kilos, eighty four. What's Maynard? Like I just think of Maynard as a tough bastard. Is he uh, heavier? Oh, he'd be a lot heavier. Yeah, so he's not pound for pound. Eighty four is not that heavy. Yeah, so pound for pound, you got anyone. Oh, mate, we'll see how we go. <laughs> oh, don't be humble now, mate. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking sell tickets. <laughs> nah, you're a good man. Now, this is my favourite part. You, as I said, you don't you don't come on Tommy Talks and uh, the Oz American Aces and not receive anything. I think we'll go to the smaller prizes first because we've got a huge prize at the end. And uh, I appreciate it. It's a big boy, time. isn't it? Yeah, it's a big boy. It's, <laughs> it's, I think I've got a man running it down here from Milwaukee Tools. If you don't know anything about Milwaukee, nothing but heavy duty. Now, let's start with the Ricks. I've got the brand new Ricks eyewear, mate. I can't thank you enough for all your support. Without you, we wouldn't be here. 
No, nah, no, nah, long supporter, mate. They've been good to me. What do you like, Ricks? Like, it would be, you know, what is it that you like about Ricks? Oh, I like the people involved, you know, the, obviously the um, the sunshade they give you for the eyes that protect them. Um, well, you, if they had dodgy lenses, you're in trouble, <laughs> wouldn't you? You'd be gone. No, nah, no, nah, you've been good to me, mate. You've looked after me and um, the bloody good uh, sun. Look sharp and spring ground all coming up, mate. I'm sure you'll sell plenty of these. Oh, I hope so because if you've got a suit, you need these. Now, I've got you the brand new Ricks Eyewear Tribeca Champagne Tour. G15 polarized lens. Have a go at these. Throw these on, mate. No one's got these in the world, by the way. They're the they're the first pair ever. We've they only just sharp. dropped them. Have a look at them. Oh, mate. Yeah, they look. Yeah, that's Ramwick. That's Ramwick. <laughs> that's Ramwick's territory. So spring carnival sort Would of Would you prefer up? Ramwick or Flemington? Because Flemington's been done up now. Nah, Flemington's better, yeah. Melbourne does it better, but Sydney's coming. What's your favourite day in spring carnival? Oh, it has to be Derby Day, wouldn't it? It's probably Are you going this year? No, nah, I'll be oh, just tone it down, mate, after. Oh, come on, mate. Derby Day? No, no, no. No, I've got a wedding. I've got a Jacob Townsend's wedding, actually. Yeah. Townie, putting it on. I mean, we love Townie, but fuck, on, on Derby Day. Uh, Gold Coast, you know. No, I'll be, I'll be you, looking at the phone. Oh, be the, <laughs> I reckon there'll be a little uh, little dabble, a couple of bets on dabble, and uh, there'll be the races on the phone, won't there? At the back, uh, while they're just here comes the bride. There'll be a few... Enthusiast, I would have thought there. While we're on spring carnival, just because we love it, what's been the best horse you've seen in your time? Oh, pretty wings, easy. Wings. What's been the best win you've had? Like, has there been a moment that you go with yeah, the boys? Oh, yeah, that, that, that uh, Campy Manuel's 30th, uh, Fierce Impact, Nick Shane, one of my good mates, and oh, um, FX. Oh, you didn't get on. Oh, I said it won't win. Dickhead. Remember, I was, I was <laughs> like, it won't win. <laughs> so we had 25 of us, and you know, that's race eight. So, so it's either you know blast out or or put your wings on and there's um yeah there was, you can't get much better energy than that when they come off the, across the line at eight bucks yeah that's that's good there's nothing better than winning with a group of men yeah and you know and women i'm just trying to say but like most punters clubs there's nothing better than winning with a punters club no that was unbelievable that's great man that's great now ricks and retirement is the segment you got the brand new Rixies on. You got yeah. the Rix Tribeca Champagne Tortoise Shell, the G15 polarized lenses. And anyone listening and watching, as you know, we offer you a 20% off discount code. It's just put in ACES at checkout, and that will just, you know, that'll drop $40 or $50 off you, and you'll get it free express shipped to your door from Perth. So that'll be there in two to three days, provided the Oz Post does their job, Tub. <laughs> um, which they always do. We love Oz Post. <laughs> Uh, mate, Rick's in retirement. You're a well-traveled man. If you were to, you know, athletic ventures go fucking gangbusters, Guzman Gomez, you know, you'll whop all the money in. Matty DeBoer gives you a couple more tips and you guys, you guys just clean up and you're a billionaire and you have to retire. Where's the one place you take your Rick's eyewear and retire? Oh. What location would it be? Jeez. Tough one. Um... Port Douglas is bloody good. I love Port Douglas. There's just no waves. That's the only thing. Um, For the big surfer, man. Yeah. Maybe we get a surf park at Port Douglas. And <laughs> I love that place. It's just unreal. Um, that'd be right up there. Bali's bloody good. Bali's good. International. So you'd, would you think about it? Oh, let's see what George says. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, some good places though. Port nah, Douglas and Port Bali. Port Douglas, yeah. If I'm in Australia, Port Douglas, yeah. There you go. I think that's our first Port Douglas. That's great. We love Port Douglas. Yeah. No, it's hot. hot. Heaven. Yeah, but it's good. You want hot. I hate cold. Yeah. Well, you want no solariums in Port Douglas, mate. No, I wouldn't need it, mate. You're out solid. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Now we go to our next segment. Caps, the home of headwear. Big shout out to Caps. They just fucking keep delivering. They've got everything. And this is my first ever cap. I'm going to rip the tag off for you. I've never given out a cap from an you know for a soccer fan because Oz American Aces, we're normally talking NBA, yep. AFL, NFL. But I know that you just love your soccer. And this is why Caps are so good. They're, they're, and when I say Caps, C-A-P-Z dot com dot au they've got it all the homer headwear they're at all your stores high points the closest one to me now mate i've got you a brand new west ham united cap we there, love mate. the hammers mate so throw that on take give me the sunnies because then you might i reckon we can get this it, it, caps just they have it all i can't keep speaking more highly of caps because and you can loosen it up if it's too tight but yeah, they've got good. they've got everything and that's why i love them the home of headwear but there's all sports they do it all you love your soccer so much 
West Ham United, I don't know enough about soccer. How are they going? They're, no, they're, they're going okay this year. You know, they are um, they had a good year last year. Uh, one of my best mates, is uh, he's a big Hammer supporter. So Shout he, him out. Harry Haley. He, um, he, he H. He'll be, he'll be wanting this one. I reckon I'll be getting the message pretty soon after this is released. Um, well, he can head to Caps H if he did, Toby doesn't pass it on. <laughs> He's down in Yarrawonga, so he might he might struggle. So I might have to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> He'd love that. Now, I love this segment from Caps. It's the Caps clanger. We've had a few. I love Brad Hill's one the other week because um, a lot of blokes do go footy and whatnot. He goes, well, I did buy a Mercedes car and sold it a few months later and lost about 30 grand. He goes, that's a bit of a fucking clanger. And then taught the, you know, the listeners, yeah. the Aces community, don't buy cars or a waste of money. Now, the AFL bad boy, <laughs> yet the lover, everyone loves you, mate. What's been the biggest Caps clanger, you reckon? Oh, Oh, probably the Zagami's incident, mate. That's uh, 30 times 10, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, mate. Don't Looking back that. at that, what's your advice to everyone? Oh, I was, I was, no, that was stupid. I was silly. And, First um, mistake would have been what? 19, 20, yeah. Uh, just been, just, I oh, just carrying on. Um, and then, yeah, so I won't be, you know, I'll be never doing anything like that again. Learned my lesson pretty quickly and, like to think oh, I would never get uh, any any anywhere close to that sort of situation. It's good. And you learn a lot from these clangers, don't you? Oh, learn a lot that one, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you lose a lot of money, don't you? Oh, too much, mate. Too much. <laughs> Couple more World Cups for Tub. We love that. Now, here comes the main event. This is like selling out the Allianz Stadium, 40K people, TFG versus Money Munster or anyone else out there that wants to fight the great man in off-season. This is the main event. We've got Milwaukee Tools, nothing but heavy duty. I've got you. These are what we've provided from Milwaukee Tools. This is what they've provided the great man. Listen to this, Tub. The M18 18-inch hedge trimmer, the M18 blower, the M18 line trimmer. The M18 16-inch chainsaw, the M12 fuel hatchet, 6152mm pruning saw kit, and they've got the M18 high output 8.0 AMP battery dual bay starter pack. I tell you what, Toby, the Milwaukee tools, they fucking looked after you. This is nothing. I mean, this is there's so much in this Roland Media van right now. I'm struggling to spit it out, but this is professional grade equipment built for the trade professional that is reliable, durable, and helps to get the job done easier. I honestly can't thank Milwaukee Tools enough, but I'm so glad that you've got this stuff, mate. Hold up, what's your? Like, have a look at this. Can we? Can we get this in this shot? Have a fucking go at this, Toby. You mean you, we wouldn't want to come on Oz American Aces? I mean, there's nothing better than Milwaukee Tools. Look at this. That's a treat, mate. Um, oh, I can't wait to get to with that. I've got a bit of work to do in my backyard, so. <laughs> Um, you know, coming from a you know a long line of family of rubbish removalists and tree loppers, you know, I don't know what to do with those tools. Yeah, that, that's a bit of a here you go, mate. You got some. There's so much here. Like I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna much, pass mate. it on. Here, chuck me some more, Braden. Now, let's get some of this stuff in the shot. Like, give me the feet. Show everyone how well the, the packaging from the, the boys. The Rick's Milwaukee. Oh, there's a bit. The competitors, <laughs> the Milwaukee boys. We love it. Got the speed dealers there. Now look at this. This is the M12 fuel driven to outperform. This is the chainsaw, mate. Chuck that over in your corner. Oh, no. I know how to work one of these, mate. Oh, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you tree a lopper? Are you a, so the tree lopper, what's the story there? Oh, Brian Green and Sons rubbish removal, mate. <laughs> you know, reverse and bobcats up the driveway at 12 years old, lopping <laughs> trees at 13. <laughs> that is great. And what do we got here? We got the M18 fuel driven to outperform. We got the full throttle. What is it there? That's we'll the. Clean it up. That's the blower. That's the blower. So you can clean up. Get on the blower. How do you go with the tools? Oh, I'm not a good, uh, you know, I'm not good handyman or sparky or plumber, but when it comes to this sort of stuff, mate, I'm I'm the man. And you know me well because you've got a few of their things at home, but they're nothing. They're the cream of the crop, aren't they? Oh, they're, be they're better than everyone, mate. Now, Kido, they, they, they're no good. Yeah, we, <laughs> who are they? Who are they? Um, who else? You got like those steel blue work boots. They're no good. Oh, <laughs> mate, like I said, reliable, durable, and just helps you get the job done easier. Milwaukee tools. I don't know why, but for – Who's the biggest tool in the locker room at the Giants? <laughs> now, the tool can be a good bloke, but who's that bloke that's just full of himself? Biggest Who is the tool. Milwaukee tool at the GWS Giants? Um, I don't know. It, it could, be, it could be me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, big, big Brenty Daniels. Oh, <laughs> Here he is. Brent Daniel, the Milwaukee tool of the week. <laughs> He'll hate that. He'll hate that. He'll get it live. He'll probably be asleep right now. He's overseas. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, he's a good man, but he can he can be the tool this week. Mate, I love that. Look, I mean, honestly, you got the in, you got as I said, the eighteen inch hedge trimmer, the blower, the line trimmer, the inch train saw, the hatchet. You got the batteries. What's the one thing that you're gonna pull out first? You reckon out of all these, is there anything you need to do at home? Probably a chainsaw, mate. When I, you know, I kick my next goal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, mate, honestly, as I said. I just want to have fun here. It's uh, it's hard to talk to you, man. It's hard to talk to blokes you know so well. You're trying to provide as much information and uh, some insights for the listeners, but you, you're coming back. We, we haven't even got we've got we've got chapters. That's chapter one, mate. Yeah, we've got yeah. chapter. We've got we, this is a fucking twenty chapter book, and it's still getting you know written. So I do appreciate your time. It's great to see you. We're gonna have a few more vodka soda ends, courtesy of Callet and uh, Alex Bots, the boys. But mate, great to see you. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it, and uh, we'll obviously wish you all the best next year with everything you said. But um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. No, thanks for having me, mate. You're uh, kicking goals, so look forward to it, mate. We'll be, uh, we'll be on again. It's the first goal I've kicked in a while, I reckon. <laughs> Thanks for listening to another episode. If you enjoy listening to our podcast, please feel free to hit us up on our social channels, at Osmerican Aces. If you're entertained, inspired, or feel more educated, please share it with your friends and family because we appreciate the support. Righto, catch you on the next one.